I am Sarah the Eagle, and I will be taking you guys through Stardew again. Quick synopsis of what we did last time. We started the game and played the first three days, um, so you didn't miss too, too much. I will be going over in this stream um, some of the tutorial mechanics in case you missed it. Um, it is on my channel, Sarah the Eagle, on YouTube. You can also find me on my uh, Facebook channel, The In Eagle Lands In. Um, Stardew is just the series we're doing right now. We will be streaming other games. Um, that is the plan, at least. Um, but I wanted to start on this just because I am somewhat decent at it, so I actually have tips to give you instead of just hilariously fumbling through every step of the way. Um, I remember watching uh, Jesse Cox and Total Biscuit play Terraria, and I was just frustrated the whole time, because I'm like, you idiots, you had a hook, and you threw it out, you could have had a grappling hook 20 episodes ago, so we're not doing that. Um, hopefully I don't do anything that egregious to uh, you guys, but if you do see something that I could be streamlining or doing a little bit um, easier, one, go easy on me, we're still in early game, and two, please let me know in the comments. So, let's get started. I will go over what we had been doing. This is my full file, forget that. We are the Eagle, so we are only in year one, first season. So quick synopsis, um, Stardew Valley is a game that was created by Eric Baroni. He is a huge fanboy of the game's Terraria, being a co-creator you would expect it. Um, and also Harvest Moon. One of his other f favorite games is also Minecraft, so this game is going to look, feel, and act a lot like those games. Um, so, quick synopsis of what we did yesterday. In the first, so this game comes in four seasons. Um, they're 28 days each. So instead of having like a January, February, March, you have the first. Right now, we are currently on the fourth of spring. So each season is spring, summer, fall, winter. There are no. Um, you still get days of the week, as you can see. Today's Thursday, but we are not um, playing under regular months. You have four months of the year, the seasons. Here we have the inventory system. In early game, you only get these. These are what you're given, and half of them are tools. So we're going to have to play our inventory wisely. Um, the way to do that is by making chests. We did make one. That was one of the, um, the things that we accomplished over the, um, the last stream. Hopefully in this stream we're going to go over a couple of the other mechanics of the game, including bundles in the community center and mining. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that by the end of the stream we'll be able to at least um, go through a, a quick tutorial of both. Um, because they're going to require, one, separate tools. The mi in the mine, you're going to need a weapon. And none of these really count as good weapons, especially not the fishing pole. Don't do that. Um, they'll be giving us a sword, don't worry. Um, and armor, that'll also be nice to have. We'll be able to fill these slots. Um, and then bundles. Bundles are going to be something that I'll explain when we get to it. So, um, also thing is that we have time. Um, time is a fast-paced scale, much like Terraria, in which you have an, an entire day's worth of activities to do. You also have this here, your energy bar. Everything you do depletes energy. Anything you eat replenishes energy. See the little green, the 13 energy and the 5 health. Health bar, don't worry about that until you're in the mine. Nothing will kill you unless you're there. Um, so how we spend our energy, kind of metaphorically and literally, isn't that just like life? Um, matters a lot. So we're going to be very diligent with how we spend our energy, especially in early game in which we have no enhancements, um, no star drops, no extensions. So we got to be careful. So these forageables here are things that you just find around the ground. And these pr in particular are nice because they give you a good amount of energy, especially the leaks. The leaks are probably the most important. In my other game, usually what I had been doing is I had been saving the spring onions for mine food, like I'd bring those with me to the mine. The eel we got really lucky right at the end of the stream. We were fishing in the ocean at night, which is usually when eels spawn. But eels are really hard to catch, and they're s supposed to be rare, at least in the early game until you have a better fishing pole. We just have like this dumb bamboo pole, literally the first pole you get. And we were lucky enough to have caught a few eels, of which we sold a few and got some good amount of money back. Um, extra credit, but if we do manage to do it by the end of the stream, what I would like to do is buy our first backpack, which will be 2,000 gold, and we'll be buying it from Pierre. So um, 
If you want to uh, follow up on more of the things that I've probably spoken to about in our first stream, as I had said earlier in the stream, you can find it either on my YouTube channel, Sarah the Eagle. You can also find it on my Facebook channel, An Eagle Lands In. So let's get started. What is the luck going to be like today? Luck is going to be something that determines or helps determine what you decide to do with your day. Um, now, it's going to your what you do, choose to do with your luck is going to change depending where you are in the game. But since we're in early game, my tip to you is anytime we have a bad luck day, whether it says like the spirits are perturbed or the spirits are very displeased. Okay, well, if the spirits are displeased, if they aren't very happy, um, um, I would suggest that you fish. Just because in early game, your luck, if it's better, gives you better fish. But they're harder to catch. And if you don't have a good pull, some bait, um, some tackle, and um, a high enough fishing skill, you're just going to be spending your energy on casts and just not catching anything. So in early game, it's actually kind of by accident, I discovered, that if you go fishing on your bad luck days, you get crappier fish. But that's good because then your fishing skill heightens faster because you'll have more successful catches. It's also good to do it that way because as long as you have more successful catches, you can fill your bundles faster, which we'll get to, and you'll also be able to sell them and make the money, which we need for like literally everything in this game. So now that they're in good humor, I would hope that means that if we get to the mines by the end of this day, which um, technically ends at 2 a.m., but we're not going to be out till 2 a.m., because if you're out past midnight, you take an energy penalty, and we do not have the energy to spare for that. So let's just say, for the sake of brevity, that the time we have is from 6 a.m. to about midnight. The time scale jumps, as I tried to mention before, I got off track. Um, your time scale is, I'd say, about 10 seconds equals 10 minutes, so it's like a bit, about a minute a second in-game. My calculations are probably a little off. Math's not my strong suit. So if you guys have the exact scale figured out, please tell it to me in the comments. It will be like legitimately actually useful to me, um, not just for the stream, but just also to play the game. So now that the, the spirits are in good humor, luck means that either your drops will be slightly better, your drops will be slightly more plentiful, or if you're in the mines, you'll find ladders down to the next level faster. And if we get to the mine, I'll show you how that works. The other report, report that we should always check is the weather. The weather only ever tells you the forecast for the next day. It never tells you this day. So try to keep current. But the reason it does that is because some major planning, especially when you're trying to upgrade your tools and weapons, is going to count on you knowing what the weather is going to be like because you will eventually have to factor not having it for that day. Um, for example, not that we'll need it in this stream or even four streams from now, but... Um, when you upgrade your watering can, it means you won't have it for an entire day and a half. The day that you turn it in, and the next day. So, how do you water crops, you may ask? Good question. Um, in that, you can't. So, the best thing to do in that scenario, the best really good advice that I got from my brother, is that you time it so that when it says the weather forecast for tomorrow says rain, you turn in your watering cans, so that way the next day when it rains, you wouldn't have needed to use it anyway. And then by the day after that, when you get it back, you can water your crops. That way you won't have to lose on profit, which, regardless of what point in the game, is super important, because without money, you can't do, like, pretty much jack. So what is the weather? Beautiful sunny day. Okay. And the third channel is going to be a switch between living off the land, which tells you little tips and tricks for things that are either going on, um, foraging-wise, fishing-wise, or um, just general notes about uh, certain little tidbits of the game. Um, you also occasionally get the show Queen of the Sauce, which will tell you a um, cooking recipe, which, since we don't have a kitchen, won't mean much, but when you do get a kitchen, will mean everything, because that will help you become friends with people, because they like certain dishes. So what do we have to say here? Yep, the spring onions. I in the first um, in the first stream when we had done this uh, earlier this week, um, I had showed you guys the spring onions um, because I had just been used to collecting them in my other file, and I figured that I would give you guys a head start. Just because if it's you know already the fourth in which this channel comes on, that's three-ish days that you would have missed on spring onions, which for early game count for a lot. You could have missed anywhere between one and 16 stalks 
of various ranks as well. So that can add up, especially when you're in early game. So, do we have a watering can? Oh, of course we do. <laughs> I put it in the chest, I forgot. So your watering can it, um, is the other um, tool. Always make sure you water your crops. Every day that they are watered means um, a day of progression in their uh, bloom cycle. And obviously when they bloom, you get to harvest them and get money. The other thing, though, is that your watering can has charges. So you have to refill it at a water source. And then be able to use it. When I'm good, not always, I try to refill it before I put it away. In early game, just because we don't have a lot of spaces, we're going to put this away. I'm going to keep that. You'll see in my inventory that we have some raw materials. Um, stone, need it for a lot of stuff. Coal, need it for a lot of stuff. Clay, wood, um, plant fiber, you do need that for a lot of things. And then we have some other weird stuff in here. Um, we have a lot of trash. I had said in the previous stream that trash does actually become useful because once you're able to produce a recycling machine this turns into raw materials that can become invaluable my personal favorite kind of trash lol um one is taco bell second of all is um the soggy newspaper because if you throw the soggy newspaper into a recycling machine it becomes cloth or at least has a chance to um most of these trash items can become one of usually two things um the like actual trash it'll say trash on it looks like a looks like a pile of rocks, um, turns into stone, which becomes useful. These broken CDs, um, which are a rip on AOL, thank you Leaderboard for pointing that out, um, turn into refined quartz, as can the broken glasses, and you use that for so many things, especially sprinklers, which were hugely important once you know how to make them. Um, it'll make the watering process much more, pain, uh, much more painless. Um, but the soggy newspapers turn into cloth, which in early game is almost impossible to find. So if you are able to save as much soggy newspaper as possible, please do so. Throw it in the, um, in the recycling machine, and you'll be able to get a mill that much faster. It'll be one of the um, buildings we can add to our farm. So I'm saving a lot of these things because they're going to become invaluable materials later once we learn the recipe. When you want to find your... Uh, recipe or to create something it's going to be under this crafting screen so if you're on a pc you hit escape um, if you're on a ps4 or a an xbox let me know what that is because i don't know um, i'm gonna guess it's probably on a controller it would probably be select or start typically the um the menus are usually something like that in my previous experience of playing ps games i do have a ps4 i haven't picked it up in a while because this game's been taking a lot of time but um, generally speaking, it's usually one of the central console buttons, or if you like, you know, click R3. Is R3 even a thing anymore? Anyway, you go to your crafting thing, and these are all the recipes, and it'll tell you what materials you need. Um, which is a huge bonus, because having to go to the guide and not knowing what it takes to make the thing you need will only result in you just shoving something in his face until he finally tells you, oh yeah, that's an ingredient for the thing that you needed. No, this will, you go to the recipe of the thing that you need, and it will tell you what you need, and how much you need. Um, and then when it is available for you to actually craft, it won't just be this weird gray, like, background thing. It'll actually have been lit up in color, and it'll tell you what ingredients you have and do not have, highlighted here in red and black. Wild seeds, I generally don't bother with, but it was a good example. Um, so, for the time being, we are watered and good, so... Let's go see if we can trigger the cutscenes for the community center. Because if we can at least do that, then we can um, go through one of the other pillars of this game for gameplay. Um, there are two plots in the game, generally speaking. Um, there are a couple of tertiary ones as well, but the two main plot lines are with rebuilding the community center. That's plot A, um, or plot 1. It's the primary one. And then there's plot B in which you um, are fighting Joe Jamart and helping keep uh, Pierre in uh, business. And then as a... Okay, so that that's not a cutscene we can do, I guess. Do we have the... Okay, I guess we can't get the community thing started or the mine thing started until we meet everybody. So, okay, so t this particular days, Thursdays, stream is going to be about meeting people. So hi Shane. Shane is as 
Grumpy as ever. All right. Um, I don't remember if we've met Pierre's family. He, well, all right, we're not gonna for a little while. But that's okay, because we can just keep foraging and hanging out until nine. Most places open at nine. Uh, you're gonna be, ooh, good. You're gonna be hard pressed to find anywhere that is open uh, before then. Clint's the blacksmith opens at nine. Um, Gunther's museum opens at nine. Um, Pierre's shop opens at nine. Robin's carpentry shop opens at nine. You get it. I'm not gonna have to keep saying it. So. Hello, Gunther. I think we met him already, but this is worth bringing up. Gunther is a great resource for while you're in the mines or out doing stuff. All this space is for secret notes, but that's going to be at least 12 streams from now. This is for when you find artifacts, which will become relevant once we start in the mines. So I'm going to skip this for the time being. It would be me wasting my breath on something we can't even do yet. <gasps> oh! Yes! Fossil! Okay, so... Um, sorry, it's a geode. I've been playing a lot of Pokemon lately, sorry. Um, so, your geodes. You'll be getting these from a bunch of different places. Mostly from the mines. You can also get them in fishing chests, and you can also dig them up with your hoe. Um, not in your farm, obviously, but um, in other places. So, this geode can become a variety of things. You always bring them to Clint. Clint is open from 9 to 4. He closes the earliest of everybody, so if you have anything to do with him, bring it to him first. You would talk to him, you'd go to Process Geodes, you bring it over, and I believe it's 25 gold per geode. Okay, so that thing that I said wasn't relevant with Gunther, it's now relevant. <laughs> Way faster than I thought it would be. So, when you get an item that you have never seen before, usually a mineral, occasionally an artifact, the description will tell you whether or not you've turned it in. I didn't realize this until embarrassingly late in the game. Um, because I would just keep going to the museum being like, Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? You can just let me save you the trouble. And just tell you that in the description it will tell you whether or not you've identified it. If it has anything to do with Gunther, if his name is in the description, he has never seen it before, you need to give it to him. So, obviously, since this is our fourth in-game day playing in our second stream. Obviously, he's never seen anything, so everything we pick up is going to be something that Gunther needs to see. So... Now that we have our first artifact, it triggers the cutscene. The game will assume that once you find your first artifact, and it says Gunther needs to see you at the museum, that you wouldn't have already spoken to him. So this is a bit redundant in what we've done, but for the game, this is the natural flow. So apparently the person who ran this museum stole everything and then just paced. So you're going to have to restock it. But that's fine, because Gunther usually pays you for it. You reach cer certain benchmarks when you find a certain number of items in which he rewards you, depending on the number of items you have, handsomely. Um, so um, you're really encouraged to bring everything you find to him. My general rule, and the same will go for bundles when we reach them, is I always turn them in first. Everything else is profit, with two exceptions. We're not going to see them for more than 20 streams, in fact, in my game that I passed by when you saw that I had 50,000 gold in, um, that's me at the end of year two and having only just seen the second of the two exceptions. They're prismatic shards and dinosaur eggs. We're not going to see them for months on this stream, but if you guys have already played Stardew for a good amount of time, if you're further than I am in this file, um, if you're further than I am in my actual file, um, then you will know what I'm talking about. For dinosaur eggs and prismatic shards, don't turn those into Gunther. In that, if you find a prismatic shard, you will be encouraged to bring it to Gunther. And I would say definitely do so when you find your second one. The first one is going to give you probably the best weapon in the game. If you go to those like weird three pylons in the desert and you drop it there. I say this not because I genuinely want to spoil it for you, but because I didn't do that and I didn't realize it until about this 
like a week, in-game week, after I gave Gunther a prismatic shard, and my brother casually asked, oh, did you find a prismatic shard? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, why didn't you bring it to the desert? And I went, oh. I still haven't found a second one, and it has been a full in-game year since I saw my first one. So, word to the wise, you find one prismatic shard, save it, and then the second one, bring to Gunther. For the dinosaur egg, you'll want to incubate that so it hatches into a dinosaur that will then produce more eggs. So, bring the second one <laughs> to Gunther. Um, you can also make some killer dino dinosaur mayonnaise, if you have a mayonnaise maker. Um, but that's neither, neither here nor there, and it's especially not relevant to this stream. We're going to try to focus on what is relevant for this stream. So, we are going to donate this mudstone that we have from that geode to Gunther's Museum, and that'll be the first artifact that we bring of many. Um, I don't know off the top of my head just how many slots he has available. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. A lot. There are a lot of slots. <laughs> Let's just suffice it to say there are a lot of slots. I want to say it's probably close to 100, but I don't know for sure. If you do know for sure, um, let me know. All right, so as of right now, we don't have anything else to give him, but in our journal, we have officially started that mechanic of the game. So, he'll be giving you money, which is very, very nice of him. Yeah, we're not going to be able... That's a quest from the other day. The quests will show up on the bulletin boards um, outside of Pierre's shop, right next to the calendar. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to do this quest because it requires a potato, which take five days to gestate, and we only planted them like two days ago, and we don't have any speed growth, so that's not going to happen, which is fine. Oh yeah, we checked that one already. So, for forageables, let's go down to the ocean and see if there's anything down there. I don't know if we've met Elliot and Willie. We've met Willie. He gave us the fishing pole. I don't know if we've met Elliot yet. So this is worth doing, even if we don't find any forageables. I like to go into this corner. There's a clam up there sometimes. Um, I always keep crab pots and worm um, machines down here because it's useful. Those we'll be able to harvest later once we fix this bridge, which takes 300 wood, which we don't yet have. All right, that's Elliot's house. He is not physically there, which is fine. So if you usually can't, I mean, this is also true in real life, you usually can't enter somebody's house unless you're friends with them. Um, and how to keep track of who you're friends with is over here in the escape tab, you go to social. So instead of crafting, you go to social. Um, if anybody, and I had said this in the previous uh, stream, if anybody is single, it means they're dateable. You do not have to be straight to date the character of the opposite sex. You can be, um, you can have rolled your character as whatever gender you'd like. If you want to give them a female body with a beard, do it. If you want to um, have a male body and have it wear a dress, go for it. Um, this game, I think, is only bound by its programming of what kind of gender you can choose, but your presentation can be whatever the hell you want. Um, similarly, any character that's a single is dateable, but they are not bound by uh, typical gender roles. So if you are a lady and you want to date Shane, go for it. If you're a lady and you want to date Penny, do it. If you're a lady and you want to date Abigail, do it. If you're a guy who wants to date um, uh, Haley, she's dateable, right? I don't actually remember. Yeah, she is. Then go for it. Um, we just haven't met her yet, which is why all of their names are in uh, question marks. I know who they all are, and I'll introduce you if I need to, but they usually do a good job themselves. So let's try to meet everybody else. I know where they all live, um, and if you don't, in your tab, you can always check on the map. So when you get, um, when you're over at Pierre's, and you're checking the bulletin board, and the bulletin board says, bring me this item. Actually, perfect excuse, let's just use this. And there's Elliot, but we'll get to him in a minute. Willie. So I would be happy if someone delivered one to me, which means you have to physically find that person and give them the item. So it's just like, okay, well, where does Willie live? Well, we know that Willie works at the fish shop because of course he does. He's the salty sea man. Um, if we want to know where somebody else lives, then you would hover your cursor um, 
over the uh, building or house and it will tell you who lives there. Um, general store is attached to the apartment where Pierce and his family lives. Um, you have Emily and Haley will be going there just because we haven't met Haley yet. Um, Jody, Kent, and Sam, I don't believe we've met them yet, but it's okay because we will because I have some ideas of who we can date. But I'm going to leave it up to the streamers. So I'm going to try to take a poll when it becomes relevant to see who I should date, who in this um, who this character should date. Uh, in my other um, file, it was really honestly between, like, it was a toss-up between Sam and Sebastian, but Sebastian is, like, dark and hot and, like, has a motorcycle, so, like, oops. Sorry, Sam. Um, but uh, whatever you guys choose, if you want me to date a lady, if you want me to date a guy, I honestly don't care. This is my second attempt, so tell me in the comments if you any of you have dated any of these characters who, like, are or are not Sebastian. Also tell me in the comments. I have only one file before this one, so I have not explored any of the possibilities. I haven't even gotten married yet. So if you guys have tea to spill, tell me. I am pouring a big pot of it. So this is Elliot. He is, as I call, the Fabio of the game. He has beautiful hair. He's definitely like romance novel cover levels of hot. Um, he's fabulous. So the new farmer we've all been expecting. He can be... Um, datable to literally any character. So here is one of your, uh, you know, bachelor slash bachelorette contestants here, and whose arrival has sparked many a conversation. I'm Elliot. I live in the little cabin by the beach. That's how I imagine he talks. Um, so, all right, so we've met Elliot. So let's go down the list and see who else we have not met. By the way, um, if you're noticing there's a heart discrepancy, first of all, good call. Secondly, it's because anybody who's dateable can only have these last two hearts fulfilled if you are dating them, which means you have to get their hearts to here. How you do that is you give them two of these gifts a week. Every week is Sunday through Saturday, so if we were to... We don't really have anything to give, though. Um, we could try to give some of these forgeables, but literally everyone hates them. <laughs> the better the item, especially if you pay, pay attention to the ranking the more likely they're going to like it. Generally, the rule is if it's harder to get or harder to make, the more they're going to like it. So I generally don't bother with gifts until I can start either um, producing items in which they're guaranteed to like them and it will up their hearts quite a lot. Or um, if I can grow things from my farm that are um, uh, silver ranking or up. So we had previously planted parsnips, we have a couple of beans, and we have some rice. So if we harvested the parsnips and one of them is silver, I'd say that is a good gift to, to, to give. From personal experience, don't give people forageables. You're wasting a gift slot to give them something they don't like. <laughs> Alright, this is Penny, and I think we've met you already, so goodbye. We are going to go meet Haley, or at least try to. Alright, have we met Emily yet? No, we haven't! Okay, good. Good, good, good. Hi, Emily. I can read it on your face. She's the kind of woman who cares about horoscopes and says the word vibe a lot. That's kind of Emily's deal. She works at the saloon with Gus, who we, I believe we have already met. Haley is her sister, who looks and acts nothing like her, but that's just also kind of funny. All right, nobody's here. You can get loot from the trash cans. I've learned that from... Um, from Pokemon. This is Vincent. He's the little kid. This is Jody. Most um, most times you get up to two dialogue options, so it's sometimes useful to try to um, use them both. All right. Yep. Not friends with Sam yet, but that's Sam. We'll be able to um, meet him if we haven't already, have we? No, we haven't. Okay. So anywhere that's closed means it's somebody's personal bedroom and you have to be friends with them. Generally, Sam will either be at the saloon in the evenings or he'll be like out in the beach or like practicing skateboard outside. So you, we will be able to, to meet him, just probably not this moment. Have we met Demetrius, Robin's husband? No, we haven't. He's also like one of the only people of color in this whole town. Um, So... I'd say... Oh, there's Haley.
she's she looks like a Regina George, I know, but she's really more of an Amanda Speckhart. Well, whatever her character's name was, I don't remember the one who who would like who could tell the weather by like grabbing herself. Um, Haley is snotty but not harmful and I think when you actually try to date her she really softens up like you get to know her a lot more and you realize that there's a lot more to her she loves photography you'll sometimes see her over by the um the river south of your farm taking photos um she really she's a basic bitch like me she loves pumpkin season um her favorite favorite thing in case you guys do want to date her tidbit is a coconut you can only get them from the desert and occasionally traveling salesperson but if you want to date her, good head start, find yourself a coconut. She also likes cake, which I think you will be getting as a reward for, uh, I want to say it's a bundle, community center bundle. All right. So as I had said, Demetrius is one of the only people of color in the entire town, with the exception of his mixed race daughter, Maru, um, because Robin, as you saw, who is his wife, is super white like me, um, but Demetrius is super not that, and Maru is their daughter. We haven't met either of them yet, but that's okay, because they're usually sequestered kind of far off the map. They live in the carpentry office. You'll be coming here quite a lot to talk to Robin. So here is Robin. She constructs all your farm buildings. Um, she can upgrade your house. And if you ever run out, she also sells wood and stone. I try to avoid buying these from her at all costs because they are literally on the ground everywhere. This is her husband, Demetrius. He is a scientist. He is the uh, local science guy. Um, he's definitely one of the smartest characters in the game, but he's also a bit of an introvert. Hashtag Stan. Um, that's right, it's Stan. I just completely showed my age. Uh, so I'm studying the local plants and animals. Have you met my daughter, Maru? Maru is an inventor. She is definitely the up-and-coming um, smarty pants, but she's not in her room right now, so she's probably wandering around town. In their basement is my man, Sebastian, but we can't meet him because we're not friends with him yet, so we'll just probably see him later. I will try to stop referring to Sebastian as my current boyfriend because that is the other game, and we're going to leave that alone. Um, I haven't dated anybody yet, so I'll try to keep my options open. Um... So, Linus is the local homeless man. You have the choice to either be an absolute dick to him, or to be, like, an actually nice, decent person to him. Um, I can't be mean to him, because that's just a jerk thing to do. So, I'm always nice to him. Um, oh, thanks a lot. Alright, so, we probably can't go in there until we talk to Marlin. Although I don't know if he's just wandering around. Maybe. It's Clint the blacksmith. <laughs> Lol, we went to him to open a geo. We didn't introduce ourselves. That was silly. George is the old crotchety man. Mara we haven't met yet. Rosmodius is the wizard. Pam, really? Where's Marlin? Did I skip him? Did I completely miss it? I honestly could have. All right. Well, we'll 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 see Marlin later. That we'll get later. All right. So the saloon should be open. So in terms of introductions, I'd say that's probably a good place to start. Let's go back and meet Clint. If I had remembered that we hadn't met him yet, then this wouldn't have been a good twenty minutes of us literally running from one end of the town to the other back down. So, um, woof. <laughs> that's on me. So, let's go down. We also haven't met Pam. She's the bus driver. She also works at Joja Mart. That's the other place we could go to. Shane works there. Oh, there's Sam. He has Goku hair. <laughs> Alright, we could stop by uh, Joja Mart if we wanted to talk to... Oh, we just missed it. Okay. Well, we're going to go to the saloon like we said we would. That's fine. Alright, that's disorienting. Oh, there's Abigail. I'm not going to call you Granny, you're Abigail, but it's fine. 
This is Alex, he's the local jock. Oh, there's Pam. She's honestly a nicer person than she looks, I swear. Her favorite things are beer and pale ale, which is, I guess, technically beer, um, and coffee. So these two we've met already, I believe. Oops. Gus. Yeah, we have. All right, so we need Maru, George, Clint. Wow, we haven't met Pierre? Oh, I guess we haven't really bought any seeds from him or actually spoken to him. I think we did buy some seeds, but we haven't spoken to him. Harvey, we haven't seen. Sebastian, Leia, Robin's sister, and Rasmodius. All right, so Leia's in her house, but we are not friends with her yet, so we can't go in. Nobody's in the saloon, and can we make it to Pierre's? Yes, okay. And because it's after five, Pierre is not running the store. He is just in the store, so now we can actually introduce ourselves. Now, Pierre sells seeds, but he's not the only person who sells seeds. Jojo Mart sells them too, and Jojo Mart is usually cheaper. But just out of principle, I don't shop at Jojo Mart because they keep pushing their rewards membership on you, and if you buy the rewards membership from Jojo Mart, the guy who runs the Jojo Mart here, Morris, will get enough money to tear down the community center and build up a Jojo Mart warehouse. So if you want a lot of money but don't care about who you hurt along the way, buy the membership and side with Jojo Mart. But as I had said, this is plot B, <laughs> plot two. I can't bring myself to do that. I always side with Pierre. So unless Pierre is closed, which is always on Wednesday, then I try to shop from Pierre's. I'll only go to Jojo Mart on Wednesday. And you can technically go to Jojo Mart guilt-free without signing up for the membership by just walking past Morris. Like, don't even make eye contact with him. Just, I'm here from a seeds. Bye. No. So um, Pierre doesn't always have the best prices, but he does usually have um, the most variety. This is Caroline, his wife. Abigail is their daughter, but I don't see her here. She's the one with the purple hair. Oh, she's in her room, but I can't get in there yet, so we'll probably just meet her tomorrow. It is getting to 6 p.m., so let's try to do something for the night. Um, if we're not going to meet everybody in the saloon, then we can just wait till tomorrow. We have met most of the people in the town. We're not going to meet Rasmodius until way later. Um, Sebastian is sometimes smoking pot um, up by the mine, so we can just wait there. Maru will occasionally come into town. Harvey and Clint and George are sometimes in the saloon. So let's just try to visit George. He's Abigail's grumpy husband. Here he is watching TV. He's the neighborhood Grinch. I mean, life's hard when you're George. Um, a lot of people are changing. Your favorite community center has been closed down. Um, you're bound to a wheelchair. I mean, it sucks to suck to to be George. But, like, also you don't have to be a jerk about it, but it's okay. Um, there are things that he enjoys, I swear. Um, you learn about them later. I was about to go fishing, and then I realized all of our slots are full. We won't be able to. So let's drop some of this stuff off. Then we'll go fishing. We can technically don't have to go fishing in the ocean. We can go fishing in any body of water. We'll have the best luck, though, um, the larger the uh, water mass is. And that's kind of similar to um, Eric Baroni's other game, Terraria. If any of you guys have played Terraria, shit, like, hit me up. Like, I love Terraria. I've logged an obscene amount of hours on Terraria. And I know that there's just a big update that came out in the last couple of weeks, and I've been avoiding it because I know that if I go back to Terraria, I will never play anything else again. Um, and when I just got into this whole streaming thing, that's kind of not my uh, idea. So daffodils provide you no energy, and they provide you no health. So I always sell them outright, regardless of ranking. Since we have our fishing pole... Let's go to an actual large body of water. I'm going to actually avoid the pond for now. And go straight to the river. 
This river also has um, the spring onions, which we haven't gotten yet today, so let's go do that. Oh, there's Leia, just wandering the wilderness at night. <laughs> okay, um, and we're going to um, be able to fish in this river, which would give us a good um, number of wild fish. Hope the luck that we had saw today, seen today, um, also sometimes determines how many um, spring onions spawn. So thankfully, because it was good luck, we're seeing some onions. Um, however, that is also going to affect the fishing mechanics. We're probably going to get harder fish. I can't guarantee we'll even catch any today, but it'll be worth trying, especially because we do still have some energy to expend. Energy does not roll over. Um, if you go to bed with energy, you're not going to have extra energy. You can't stockpile it. You can't store it. So it's usually best to just use it while you have it. Um, if you go to, and I've said before, if you go to bed after, I think it's one, then you take an energy penalty the next day. You, would, you wouldn't start at full like you would if we go to bed at midnight. You would be starting at, I think, like about here or less, which in early game can be crippling. Um, so we're not going to do that. We are going to um, go to bed at midnight. We're only going to be fishing for in-game in about two hours. And then we're going to head back, because it's going to take us some time to run up. So the fishing mechanic is different from a lot of games. Um, you'll see the same animation, there we go, just like in Pokemon, but it's this little drag game. So long as you keep the green bar on the fish until your bar over here in the uh, right portion can um, fill, you have officially caught the fish. But fish, different fish have certain what I call thrash factors. Fish will fight harder and in different patterns. And once you're playing the game for a lot longer, or you get forgeables like this, once you've been playing the game um, longer, you start to recognize the thrash patterns. So you can tell what fish you've caught before you've even caught it, based on their fight patterns. Um, and once we get bait, and once we get a better fishing pole, and once we get other improvements, this little mini game becomes way easier. I promise. It will be difficult. The learning curve is pretty high, especially because your little fishing bar is so low, and this whole casting bar thing is not that intuitive. Um, it can, I think it does affect the quality of fish that you find based on your cast distance. Um, you would want it to... Um, it's a moving bar, kind of like a, uh, an arcade game in which you have to like hit the button as soon as the little buzzer is on the right uh, color. So... This is mostly cast distance. If it's in the red, it's not going to go very far. If it's in the green, it'll go really far. And if you hit max, which I've almost done, then it'll go as far as it possibly can. And I think that does somewhat affect what quality of fish you can catch. Ooh, this will be our last cast. It's almost midnight. I did not time that well. I like to go with a bunch of small clicks, because if you hold it down, if you hold the, um, the mouse click... Um, the left click down, then your bar will just go straight up, but you don't get as much control. You can also exceed the um, the fish, in which that will mean that your, your catch rate goes down, which is bad. So I find it's more precise if you just give it a series of little clicks, just click rapidly, and you have a bit more control that way. Oh my god, please just move. Okay. Um, our first building that we're going to try to afford in this series is a barn, because when you get the barn, you get a horse, and the horse is your only speed boost for the entire game, um, until you can start brewing coffee, that is. Alright, we didn't sell anything because we were in a rush to go to bed, so that means that day five is going to start with profit. Alright, so we have... Oh! Marnie! Hi, Marnie. You see this cat here? Oh, that's right, I selected cat. Found it sitting at the entrance to your farm. I think it's a stray. You can also choose a dog. Um, when you're creating your character, you can choose whether or not you want to adopt a cat and whether or not you want to adopt a dog. And if you want to see the um, the different quote-unquote breeds, um, go see my first stream. I've posted it on Facebook and on my YouTube channel. Um, there are, I think, three color variants per animal, but as of right now, you only get cat and dog. You can have other animals on your farm, but they would be livestock, so you'd have to buy and earn them later on in the game. So you can keep, like, goats, chickens, ducks, rabbits, um, 
cows, I think sheep. Um, haven't gotten them in my other game yet, so like I think so. Pigs, um, and if you're very lucky, dinosaurs. So for the time being, we'll take the kitty. Uh, yes. Let's see. What should I name this cat? Uh, comment below if you'd like to see me name this cat in particular. If not, I'm just going to choose a bad pun. Or a past cat name. I've had, let's see, the cats in my family have been Kiva, Tigger, Oliver, Milo. Um, my family's cats have been Autumn, Bandit, Stormy, Pumpkin, Kirsty Love. I mean, some of them are kind of weird cat names, but uh, this one's an orange cat, like my uh, old cat Oliver used to be. She, don't ever tell a four-year-old um, that they can't name a female cat a boy name. They won't understand. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's name this cat Whiskers. Because there are other things to do in this stream, and I'm sure you guys don't want to just wait for me to name this cat in 20 minutes. I have a cat now. Cats are more of an uh, your pet just in general. Your pet on this farm is more of an aesthetic thing. They don't actually do anything, but they're cute and it's nice to have um, a pet around. And once you um, if you right click it, you pet it, and then it tells you that it loves you. <laughs> it's really really sweet. The landslide caused by our drilling operation. I'd like to remind you that our drilling operation is entirely legal. Responsible stewardship of the local environment is our top priority. The landslide caused by our drilling operation. We apologize for any inconvenience this accident may have caused. We value your continued support and patronage. Morris. Alright, so... This is a ranked fish, which means it will sell for a little bit more, as will the onions. So those will be our first profit for the day. And look, our parsnips have grown. Alrighty, so, and we have a silver parsnip, so this would be a good gift. Let's save that. And then we're going to need the parsnips for a bundle, so let's save one of those. In the meantime, everything else is profit! So, let's do that. Let's see. Yeah, put the stone away. What I like to do is, even if I don't have seeds, so long as I have a little bit in a, this little hoed patch, I like to water the ground, because then all you need to do is just plant the seeds. If you do, however, leave a patch of ground um, with no fertilizer, with nothing in it, and it's just tilled, it will become untilled and overgrown. Like, it'll it'll just go away. It'll become like this terrain, which means that if you have to rehoe it, and since you have to rehoe it, that means you're expending more energy. The only tool that doesn't expend energy, so far as I know, is the um, scythe. And you can use it for pretty much anything, including, um, mostly though, uh, for grass and for plants like this. There we go. Alright, so nowhere is open yet, including Pierre's, but you know who is here. Traveling merchant. Let's go visit the traveling merchant. Let's go visit the traveling merchant. Traveling Merchant only shows up on Fridays and Sundays, so this is literally the first time we will have seen the Traveling Merchant. They're not technically a normal NPC. You don't have to get to know them. They're not part of the regular roster. And a pig drives her cart with a fez. Let's see. <gasps> okay. Brief reason. Okay, so explanation. So... Um, the Traveling Merchant stock is not always the same. Traveling Merchant stock is usually randomized, and 
She usually has a variety of things that are rare or not. It took me a full in-game year in my file to get one of these. Because I had to do it the old-fashioned way. I had to plant the damn sapling into a tree the entire season before it was ready to bloom. So I waited 29 in-game days, or 30 or so, to buy that. That was after it took me almost a full year to have it available. And we just got dummy lucky and found a pomegranate from the traveling merchant. Oh my god, I'm a little salty right now. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> it's fine. This is good news. This is good news. I'm just frustrated that in this file we got to find one of the hardest things to get in the game immediately. That took me so long to get it in my other file, but it's okay. Um, once the bundles become apparent, we're just going to drop this right off. And we're not going to worry about it. It was... The bundle with the pomegranate in it was the second to last bundle that I filled. Yesterday. Like, l literally, I played this game yesterday and filled that bundle on my file. That's how long it took. Ooh, we got some copper. Good, good, good. Alright, so Pierre's is open. So let's go to Pierre's. We're going to have to sell some of this, but that's okay. We're going to leave that pomegranate in there, and whatever we do, we are not going to do anything about it. Let's see. Topaz. Uh, topaz is also a good gift for Sam, but I don't think we'll be seeing a topaz in the time it takes to um, finish the quest. <sighs> but, alright. Um, let's just drink the cola. Nope. There we go. Our energy went up a little bit. So let's... I think we did plant some potatoes. I know we planted some beans, and I think we planted at least one cauliflower. Let's plant one kale. Because they're expensive. That's good too. And we'll just do a bunch more parsnips. Oh, balls. Alright, we'll plant it and we'll come back. <laughs> we still got plenty of time. Um, you can upgrade your tools to be more efficient. Um, this copper will help us do it. Our first upgrade that will be available to us will be copper, and it'll be a different ranking of all of our tools, except for the, um, the fishing pole. So you would need five copper bars for um, each one. So, see, because we already watered this, we don't have to do it. And because we're already watered, we can put this away, actually. So now let's go buy all of the seeds. Let's get one more kale just so it's even, because my Virgo is speaking to me. Um, and then we can talk more shop. Oh! The cutscene! Yes! Okay. Here we go. Mayor Lewis is showing us the community center, and this is where plot A begins. What an eyesore. This is the Pelican Town Community Center. This is one of the reasons that George is so salty. Which is funny that Lewis says that, because when you talk to most of the characters, that's not what they're doing. <laughs> they're actually bored. Um, most of the characters are not watching TV, actually. Um, not a lot of characters will talk about the community center, but I'll tell you, there is a party when you fix it. And it's very, very rewarding. I just did it, like, today. Like, the end of my year two file just fixed the community center. So, keep in mind, this will... This plot A does take you a while. And you're not technically supposed to, quote-unquote, finish it at any point. Um, if it takes you two years, if it takes you one year, if it takes you five. Um, this game is pretty loose. You're not obligated to do it. And because certain items for bundles come in and out of season, 
it will invariably take you a little longer to finish certain bundles than others. So don't feel like just because I just said I finished my community center in year two means that you have to. Um, I'm trying to speed run the community center because of a lot of spoilers that my brother told me about, about late game. Um, plus, I just... I'm a Capricorn. I turn in my work on time. I turn in my work early. I get it done. Um, and then everything else is money. I get it done, so that way everything else is gravy. So just how I did it with my prerogative as I finished the community center in two years, um, because you have to go through like multiple seasons just for certain crops to even be available for purchase. Or if we're lucky as hell and get a pomegranate on our second stream from the traveling merchant, it's fine, I'm not salty. So he's going to bring us inside and we're going to see what the hell's going on inside. You can skip this, by the way, but I figure if you're new to um, Stardew, this is one of the most important early game cutscenes. Yeah, remember what I said about the uh, membership? If you buy a Joja Mart membership, they tear this building down. And most of the villagers will be mad at you. Remember, Mayor Lewis was also a friend of your grandfather's. And your grandfather's the one who gave you this farm. So your grandfather had a hand in this community center. So there is kind of also a personal note as to why you um, are encouraged to pick this storyline. You don't need to. And for anybody who has bought the Joja Mart membership and turned this into a warehouse, tell me what that game was like. Like, tell me what that decision did for your file. I've never tried it. I can't bring myself to. So I'd love to know what actually goes on on that half of the game. so different because I just fixed it up. I forgot what it used to look like. Vincent and Jazz, by the way, are the kids, but um, spoilers, it's not them. It's them. I forgot how pretentious I made myself look. Maybe I just have really sensitive eyes. It's not a rat. Rats don't build houses. Yeah, let's go back inside. Yeah, this wasn't built by a rat. Spoilers. It's got different rooms because there will be different bundles in here and all the bundles are themed. Ooh, our first one. And we can't read it. <laughs> That's okay. We will be able to eventually. But each of these rooms, I'll give you a hint. There are six of these stars. And there are six little areas that you'll need to focus on. All right, so we'll go back there later. Um, since the, we got a letter saying that the landslide had been moved, that means that we can technically now access the mine. So let's see if we can kickstart that aspect of gameplay. Because once we have the mine unlocked, that's literally one of the four pillars of this game's gameplay. Um, I had covered it in the first stream. There are four pillars of gameplay in order to really accomplish everything you need to in this game. There's gathering, which is the most important. There's... Farming, as you would imagine, crafting and fishing. Crafting and gathering are both going to require you to go to the mine. So here is Marlin. Ooh, creepy. 
Here, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. You'll want to become a member. Okay, so we now have a new tool. You swing it um, much like you would use the um, pickaxe or the um, axe. I don't believe swords use any energy. I'm looking my, at my energy bar, and even though our character is moving, our energy bar is not. I don't think. This is an elevator. It will work, I swear, but it only works when you hit a checkpoint. So every five levels that you go down is a checkpoint. So now, see, now you have your health bar. And that's why we bring these with us. All right, and we need stone anyway. So the po this is the dungeon crawler aspect of this game. In order to find, um, in order to go down levels to advance, you need to find. <gasps> oh, topaz! That's for um, what's his nuts? That's for um, Sam. Let's eat the leek. Take the topaz. Sim will give us a hearty sum. So, I'll finish my sentence at least. Um, in order to advance in the mine, you have to find the ladder that goes down. There we go. Oh, I don't want to... Yeah, let's... Literally throw that. We can pick that up later. I think you have about 24-ish hours to pick up things that you've physically dropped. Now, that's different from throwing things out. When you throw it out, it's gone for good. When you just sort of throw it out of your inventory, you can pick it back up later. Because, again, we're so limited with slots. Um, it's always good to just throw something down, at least if you know you can pick it up later. So we're going to turn this in to Sam. Get a nice little pretty penny. Especially because we want that backpack. And let's go back to the mine and explore a little bit. What I like to do to make the mining experience a little easier, especially while our slots are so limited, is I like to build a chest. Oh, there he goes. And then take it with me. All right, so to give a gift, you hold it aloft by having it act active on your action pad. You walk up to the person, and instead of left-clicking, in which if it's a food it will make you eat it, you right-click when it says that gift icon. There we go. You're welcome, Sam. Oh, and there's Abigail. We haven't said hi to her yet. Alright, she's a bit of a space cadet, but she's basically my best friend in my file, so... Alright, so now that we've done that, let's go put the pomegranate away before we do something stupid. Um, I have restarted files from doing something stupid with an item that I really should have just put away. So, um, from personal experience, we're just going to put the pomegranate away. Um, especially until the bundles become available to us. Oh, we never bought the seeds. Balls. Yeah, this is what happens. Sometimes you get sidetracked. If we are fast enough, maybe we can go to Pierre's. Okay, look at all these quests. My goodness. Delivery. Sam just paid us. Thank you. Oops. Raising animals. That's going to take a while. Farming level 1 and craft a scarecrow. That's going to take a while. Alright, so we have officially planted, grown, and harvested our first thing. So now we get a reward. So we are almost halfway to um, a backpack. I don't think we've gotten Pierre in time, but... Maybe? Nope, there he goes. Alright, well, we missed out on a day of planting, but some of our stuff is planted, so that's not the worst. Let's at least go back down to the mine, and I'll at least show you guys how that works. Um, if you do ever get frustrated and feel like you've um, irrevocably like screwed up your whole day, what you can always do, I won't do it because we'll have lost a lot of progress and also may not get that pomegranate back, um, is you go to exit game and you go to exit title. So long as it's not the end of the day and you haven't clicked OK on that evaluative screen 
of this is everything you've sold, this is all the money you've made, da da da. Um, so long as you don't click OK at the end of that, you will not have hit the save point. So you can restart. You only get one save point in this game. Um, oh, that was lucky. You only get one save point in the game. Oh, even luckier. Look at this copper. Um, so if you uh, don't access it, you can always restart a file. So that way, uh, if you screwed up, you can unscrew up. You can get it right. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. So... I've not always been the best at combat combat in this game, so you'll run into multiple different kinds of slimes. They'll hop around you. You can pretty much dodge them and slice them. Once they stop moving, it means they're charging and ready to pounce. And if they pounce, then... Ow. <laughs> you get hurt, like this. Oh, there's a bug. But bugs are... Oh, my God. Uh... Nuts. Um, double nuts. Um, no, we'll just have to do this later. We need more spaces before this becomes a thing. Let's... No. You know what? Daffodils don't sell that much anyway. But there's copper down here. And there's bug meat. Let's just throw this out. So bug meat, you can turn into bait. Which you can't use with a bamboo um, fishing pole, but when you upgrade fishing poles, any ranking after that uses bait. And bait is really, really nice. Because bait um, increases the um, speed at which something bites. So you get, um, oh, not yet. Um, you get um, more fish in a smaller amount of time. Um, depending on what kind of bait you use, it can also increase the value of the fish. So we're going to take a little shortcut to get back home just because our inventory is full. Oh, that's right. We just got our first topaz and just immediately brought it to Sam. That's right. We didn't even bring it to Gunther. So Gunther will reward us for finding the little topaz, but Gunther's isn't open, so we're going to do that tomorrow. Alright, cut this down. It's okay, we can survive without all that plant matter. Alright, so let's drop this in. Uh, let's sell these. Oh, I think we missed the spring onions again. But I think we just have enough time to go get them. If we run fast, I think we can do it. Gotta go fast, gotta go fast. Gotta run down to this lake here. Yes, I did see the horseradish up while we were running away, but we didn't have any slots, so I couldn't get it. And I really don't want to spend the time when the spring onions are so much more valuable. And there are none. There are literally none. Cool. Glad we spent the time to do that. It'd be like that, though.